I'm holding a fuel pump out of a early Mercedes fuel injected engine. This is out of a 1959 220SE. This is that first generation of electric fuel pumps in those early models. If you saw my other videos, I did a, a video on what I call the short pump. This started showing up in the mid 60s. Well, look at the difference. And then we call this the long pump and the short pump, okay? This was on the fuel injected cars from the late 50s to the, the mid 60s. The models varied a little bit right there in the mid 60s, so you'll, you'll have to check. It's pretty easy. You get under the car, remove that cover over your fuel pump, and you can spot it right away. Do you have the long pump or you do, do you have the short pump? Now, I've done a video series on the short pump. I've taken these apart. I've come up with a, uh, with a rebuild kit that you can do this yourself. So I'll put links in the show more description below this video if you're interested in learning more about the short pump and the kit I have available to overhaul it. But in this case, I want to talk about the long pump because it's a little bit different design, but typical of a lot of these early pumps, whether it's short or long, one day this stopped working, just stopped working. So of course when that happens, the first thing you want to do is you want to check uh, your fuse and that checked okay and, and of course I got into the car and I was getting power. I could use a 12 volt light or a 12 volt voltmeter and check for power back at the, the two terminals. And I was getting power so you know I said oh no you know these, these are really really expensive pumps. I don't even think you can get them new anymore so I was a little bit concerned that I, I, I had a failed pump. But, Knowing historically a lot of these pumps, I would say I've taken probably 20 of these pumps apart over the years that exhibit the same problem that I'm going to show you in this video. Very easy to fix, okay? And you're going to be very happy if this happens to your early fuel injected Mercedes. So let's get up close here and I'll show you kind of what was going on. I'll, we'll give this a 12 volt test. You can see how the motor's running and then we'll talk about how we're going to fix it. When the pump was mounted in the car, of course, I applied 12 volt power to these two contact points and the pump wasn't running. So I removed the pump from the car and I removed the bottom plate here and the impeller. Now watch as I take and apply power. I've got my booster here that I can power this up with. Look at that. I think you can hear it running. It has a nice sound to it, the bearings sound okay, and it starts up and runs very smoothly. Now notice that the motor doesn't have very much torque. If you watch closely, look at how long it takes to get up to speed and how long it takes to slow down. So it's a brushed motor with not very much torque and that's part of the problem. The other problem is this impeller has a very tight clearance to this surface and the bottom plate. And if you've looked at my other video on the Beast, the 6.3, when I took the pump apart, it had a lot of varnish buildup in here. And the varnish was what was making the impeller stick and preventing the motor from spinning up. Well, in this case, I didn't have varnish, but I have some, it's almost like a calcified material here, both on this bottom plate and right here. And you can feel it. I rub my finger across there. That's thick. So it's obvious that with this impeller in here and the plate bolted on here tight, that this had so much friction that the motor could not spin the impeller. So all I'm going to have to do here is clean this up. And I'm going to warn you right now, don't use sandpaper, don't use a scraper. I'm going to attempt to use a plastic scraper to see if I can scrape this off. And I'm going to be very careful that I just keep, I'll get this in the solvent tank and try to scrape whatever this is. This is some sort of chemical residue from years of fuel. So we're going to get this off on this bottom plate. We're going to clean this off here. And then, of course, I'm going to have to get a new seal. Look at this one. Somebody in the past has tried to use a little RTV silicone to reseal this. And, uh, you know, I've seen so many of these leak. And you know I have a kit with new seals for the short pump. It just so happens that the same seal will fit the bottom 
of this long pump. So I don't have any other information or parts to take this pump apart to rebuild it. But when you have the pump off, there's two other things you want to check. This is the inlet coming from the fuel tank. You'll want to check the finger screen. Now here you can see the screen's not too bad. It's going to have to be cleaned. There's some crud right up here on the end, but I tell you, I've seen some of these that are just almost plugs. So you want to clean the screen. And then on the other side is a check valve. And this check valve also can get crudded up. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, look at that. Look at how corroded that check valve is. Now you can clean these up and actually check them by blowing on them because you can blow one way and you can't suck the other way. If you look right down in here, I've got some cleaning to do down in here too. There's quite a bit of crud. You can probably see it right there. So I'll have to get a brush and really clean that out. And then we'll get ready to put this thing back together. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll get everything cleaned up and then we'll come back and I'll sh show you the final results of the repair. It's all back together and ready to test. Let's put some power to it and see how it sounds now. Okay, listen to that. Success. And it didn't cost me hardly anything other than my labor. So this is a classic example of something you could do yourself on your own car and save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now, it wasn't as easy putting it all back together or even cleaning it up. I had some real problems getting these parts clean down here. You know, I tried as much as I could with a plastic scraper and I ended up having to use a single edge razor blade. Now you have to use a brand new one and you have to be very careful. You get a lot of angle to it and you don't push very hard because you don't want to scratch the aluminum. And I had to work that crud off uh, with this razor blade. It was the only way I could get off. I didn't want to take a wire brush to it. I didn't want to take sandpaper to it. But in the end, it worked quite well and I was able to get that cleaned up. So now you can hear, you know, the pumps running. One thing, always lubricate the impeller. You'll see that in my other video. Always lubricate that impeller up with oil. Lubricate the O-ring. Now let's talk a little bit about that O-ring. I may have jumped the gun. Look at the one I pulled out. It wasn't even an O-ring. Somebody had just put in a whole bunch of RTV silicone and it was actually working. The pump was not leaking. So good on him for a successful repair, but I don't really recommend that. And when I went to install the O-ring from our short kit, guess what? It's the right diameter, but it's a little too thick. So I had to get another O-ring out of my stock. I happen to have an old OE O-ring that fit this pump. So you may not see a kit from me. You'll know, I'll put a link in the show more below if and when I'm able to source these O-rings for the long pump. But I'm ready to put this back on. There was a couple other things that I had to come up with. You know, this rubber piece that goes around it for the mount was shot. But fortunately, from my old used parts stock, look at that. I'm going to clean this one up. I have a good used one. So that's going to solve that problem. And in closing, there's a couple other things I want to say about these pumps from a preventative standpoint, look at this one. Look at how badly scratched that is. Now that's either from a lot of contamination in the fuel pump and the finger screen getting torn or just not getting installed properly. They do fall off, that fitting by the way. So you wanna make sure your fuel tank's clean and you don't wanna run these dry. If you run out of fuel and just let the pump run and run and run, you will see this type of scoring. Now I don't know at what extent is the scoring going to be too bad but uh, that's not a good sign. And you can see this O-ring here. Look at how flat it is. Totally flattened out over the years. So this one was probably leaking. And of course, look at the hoses. Anytime you work on these old pumps, and I'm going to repeat, anytime, plan to replace the fuel hose. Look at how stiff that hose is. And if I, if I twist it, you know, it'll probably break off. And you don't want that happening when you're driving down the road. The uh, other thing, and this is only unique to these early style long pumps is there is a little keyway right down in here. A little teeny keyway. Look, I don't even know if you can hardly see it here. I'm pointing at it. It's got to be installed properly. That keyway has to go on the drive stud first and then the impeller slipped over the top. Look at how small that keyway is. So if you take one of these apart, you better take it apart over a bucket or a large tray so when the impeller comes off then you're not going to lose that little keyway because you won't even know it exists. 
The other thing is when you're pulling off the impeller, never pry on one side like this. You will end up breaking off one of these tabs. You need two pick tools, and I'll reach over here and get the second one. If you have a couple of angle pick tools, and you want to do this very carefully, all right, you're going to just take and rock this. See that? And some of these impellers will be very hard to get off because they're kind of almost glued to that shaft. Okay, here it comes. And then when you pull the impeller off, you're going to look down in there. Now this keyway is gone. I don't know why, but there's a little metal keyway that, that resides right in there, so you have to be really careful. So just those warnings, if you're taking your old style long pump apart, you want to do this, I'll try to get on those O-rings so you'll have an O-ring to be able to replace when you do your preventative maintenance on your own pump.